Hello, this is Analysis Paralysis, the show where I overanalyze many concepts, principles, and theories of game design. I'm Matthew Wickham, and today we will be looking at Bioshock Infinite and its DLC, Burial at Sea. Bioshock Infinite is gorgeous, well acted, and interestingly written despite a uh, self indulgent convolution. The negatives unfortunately outweigh and can't be ignored by the yeah, but the story man excuse anymore. Now I will warn you, everything I'm about to say for the next minute or so has been said in some way or another, but please bear with me, I do have a point. 9 out of 10 criticisms of Bioshock Infinite usually stem from the Ludo narrative dissonance. Dissonance, dissonance. The disconnect between the ludology and the narrative. At its core, Bioshock Infinite is a cyclical collection of repetitive, mundane shooting galleries followed by faux deep scripted sequences. And while it does do a passable job at that, it really tries to prop itself up on being an intellectual game that's greater than the sum of its parts. There's no valid explanation as to why there are so many violent encounters, no real reason for the extremity of the violence, and there's a great lack of common sense from about the 12 minute mark. Even if we set that aside, the mechanics of the game simultaneously feel too rigid and too loose to effectively match the narrative of the game. This complete departure from the previous installment's encouragement of exploration draws unwanted attention to the repetitive and sometimes unfair gameplay. All right, that's out of the way. Now, my point. Burial at Sea is systematically the game Bioshock Infinite should have been. Burial at Sea follows our two main protagonists as they make their way through Rapture in hopes of finding a girl presumed dead. And much like the beginning of Infinite, the game prevents you from unholstering a weapon for a reason that makes more sense than, well, this. <laughs> no, no, God damn it! Allowing you, the player, to leisurely explore the non-splicer-ridden parts of Rapture while figuring out the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the narrative. Unlike Infinite and its restrictive corridors, Burial at Sea allows the players to roam Rapture freely without being escorted from Shooting Gallery A to Shooting Gallery B. There are even secret rooms for you to sneak into. Knowing that I do have a gun, but I'm not waving it in front of my face while at the record store makes the experience more believable. Giving players multiple sequences to solve a problem and allowing the player to freely explore the environment makes the game all the more immersive. And yes, while the polished version of Rapture is enthralling, when the game throws our players down the literal rabbit hole into Fontaine's makeshift prison, that's where it gets really exciting. With our weapon now drawn and naturally shy on bullets, the tension is cranked up to 10. Knowing that Splicers, Little Sisters, and in turn Big Daddies reside in each room of Fontaine's, walking through each department now takes on a more critical task. The player must slow down and think about what their next move needs to be, or risk defeat. The player is running and gunning because the narrative says they're being hunted by atom-starved deviants, while the gameplay says if they don't run and gun, they will be killed by the aforementioned atom-starved deviants. From this point out, Burial C makes quick work of showing how it's improved on Infinite's faults. Returning the weapon wheel, reducing the number of plasmids slash vigors. There's possession, a stun, a stun, a shield, a damage dealing stun, a charge, a stun, and a push. To a smaller but equally varied arsenal, and once again, effectively connecting the narrative to the gameplay. And all these things in episode one are, are fine and dandy, but where I think the game really sings is in episode two. Think of episode two as Majora's Mask to Infinite's Ocarina. Opening with a brief introductory sequence that my inner Francophile fawns over, I, I, mean, I mean, look at this, it's, it's fucking gorgeous. The game now follows a newly powerless Elizabeth and her futile attempt to save Sally and escape Fontaine's prison. Unlike Booker in episode one, Elizabeth is not a trained killer. She has no investigative or military background. She's just a girl who's bitten off more than she can chew. Only finding solace in a fabricated version of the man she just killed. You're my only friend. Projection of your own. Could you humor me then? Please. And both the narrative and the gameplay force her, and in turn the player, to overcome these monumental obstacles. The structure of episode 2 is similar to episode 1, but improved, as ammo variety, new plasmids, health packs, and a decent stealth mechanic all make a welcome return. Early on, episode 2 almost requires sneaking around levels in order to avoid being swarmed by enemies that are much stronger than the player. Yet again, raising the stakes by taking a little bit of control away from the player in order to make them feel as powerless as Elizabeth. But as the game progresses and Elizabeth gains more abilities and new weapons, the player now has multiple ways of progressing through a level without compromising the tone of the narrative. Let's look at one room in particular. All right, right here, swarming with Adam crazed splicers, the player can either A, run in guns a-blazing, 
B, sneak their way through carefully and slowly, and or C, distract and incapacitate the group at one time thanks to our reintroduced ammo types. All of these options feel like reasonable reactions to the situation placed in front of us, compared to... To close this already long-winded and self-fulfilling video, Bioshock Infinite is a perfect example of a game that wanted to attempt new grandiose ideas while also trying to appeal to its widest audience, never quite going far enough in either direction to create a truly exceptional game. However, Burial at Sea's improvements help remedy the fault of its predecessor by understanding what made Infinite memorable and enjoyable. Elizabeth! Tin Man! Booker. Heads. Or tails. And combining that with the atmosphere, gameplay, exploration, and the feel of the original Bioshock, effectively creating a ludonarratively harmonic, albeit far-fetched, experience for fans of the series. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please keep your eyes peeled to this channel for more videos like this in the upcoming months. And uh, for the time being, please enjoy some royalty-free jazz and a little bit of eye candy.